Hi bookish besties, my name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you were already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today it is time to do my April reading roundup. <music> Now, if you are new to my channel, this is a video series that I do every single month, kind of in lieu of a formal wrap up. This video is going to encompass multiple things. It's going to encompass a brief overview of what I read during the month. It's going to include bookish stats, my haul and unhaul for the month, as well as balancing the books where I try to determine if my physical TBR is going up or down at the end of the month based on what I've read, what I've hauled, etc. Now, before we get into it, there is something new that I'm going to be adding to these videos going forward. And that is going to be a tops and bottom section where I talk to you about my favorite and least favorite books of the month. If you've been with my channel for any length of time, you will know that it is practically an inside joke at this point, my quest to find the perfect wrap-up format. I've done just about every single type of wrap-up format that is possibly in existence. And lately I've been doing like weekly or bi-weekly reading vlogs, but here's the problem with reading vlogs, because as much as I love to film them and as much as I love to watch them, they are probably the most time-consuming and tedious type of video to edit. I just don't have the time to edit them in a timely manner and still get out all of the formal content that I'm trying to produce. So what I'm going to do instead is in these videos, you know, when I'm already kind of giving you an overview of what I've read for every single month, I'm going to just briefly touch upon some of my favorite and least favorite reads for the month to give you an idea of what I'm currently reading and how I've felt about it. And I do still plan on doing vlogs on my channel, but they're probably going to be a little bit more specialized going forward. They're going to be themed, you know, reading specific types of books for a specific type of reason, because I still do love reading vlogs. It's just not going to be something that's as consistent as it was previously. So we are actually going to start with the tops and bottoms and then I will run through all of the other books that I read for the month so you will know absolutely everything that I read in the month of April and my thoughts and feelings on them before jumping into the bookish stats and so on and so forth. So my absolute favorite book of the month and this is probably by far the biggest reading surprise that I've had in a while. My favorite book for the month and my only five star read was Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. This is a book y'all that I never had any intention of reading ever in my life. It was never something that interested me but it was one of your recommendations specifically Nancy. Thank you so much for this recommendation and first of all I listened to the audiobook and it was narrated by Will Wheaton and if you have the opportunity to listen to this book I highly recommend because Will Wheaton did a fantastic job of narrating and I think he just made it an overall experience because for the most part that's what this book was. This was a complete experience from start to finish and I'm sure you all already know what this book is about but essentially it is set in a pretty near future. It's set in like 2040, 2045 and essentially the world has gone to hell because humanity has kept on their bullshit and they haven't done anything to rectify the destruction that they're making to the planet and so everything is basically falling apart part. A lot of people are living in poverty. They are having a heck of a time and nobody really wants to live in the real world. So most people spend all of their time in the Oasis, which is this very vast, in-depth virtual reality that a man named Halliday, if I'm remembering correctly, made. And at the beginning of this video, you find out that Halliday has passed away. And prior to passing away, he made this video saying that within the Oasis, he has hidden three keys. And if you find all of the keys and get through all of the challenges, you are going to find an Easter egg that is hidden. And the person who finds the Easter egg basically gets control over the Oasis as well as Halliday's vast fortune. And so this entire book is all about our main character, Wade Watts, trying to find the key and all of the things that he goes through. And I cannot even tell you how astonished I was at how much I loved this story, considering I never thought that I wanted to read it. Because first of all, it is incredibly well written. Not only that, but it is very clever. It is very well crafted. It is also beautifully paced from start to finish. There's never really a lull. And also this book is very heavily centered on the 80s because Halliday was essentially obsessed with the 80s. So a lot of the clues and the challenges were all based around the 80s. And so Wade Watts is not only a scholar on Halliday himself, but also on the 80s. So it's very nostalgic in that way. Like even if you never lived through the 80s, having all of that incorporated into a science fiction story that is set in the future definitely lends an air of nostalgia to it. And like I said, this overall was just such an amazing experience. I love this book from start to finish. Nobody is more shocked than me at how much I loved that story. It was an easy five stars. I loved it tremendously. And to be honest with y'all, my favorites for this month were all surprises because this next read was a 4.5. It was another one of your recommendations. Thank you so much to Jess from Average Jess for this recommendation. It was a book called Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. Now this is another one that has really been going around. It has been getting a lot of buzz, but it's not one that was ever on my radar. Like I had nothing against it, but it was never one that I was excited to read or I really even had on my TBR. But again, it was your recommendation. And so I went ahead and picked it up and I am so glad that I did because this book was just a wholesome, fun, good time. And I enjoyed again, every single second of my reading experience with this. So this is a book that I would probably classify as a cozy, soft fantasy romance. And what I mean by that is this is set in like a fantasy world 
world, but nothing about this fantasy world is developed at all. The magical system is not developed at all. You just know that the characters live in the village, in the kingdom, and then there is a villain within this kingdom. You know, it's all very, very vague, but that is really not the point of the story because the point of the story are the characters. This follows our main character, Evangeline Sage, and she is basically responsible for taking care of her ill father and her younger sister because her mother is no longer in the picture. She has just lost her job. She is desperate to find another one. And one day she is walking home through the woods and she encounters the villain. Now the villain is this dastardly evil overlord in the kingdom. Everybody is absolutely afraid of him. He does horrific things and she encounters him. And after some conversation, he actually offers her a job as his assistant. So you're following her as she's becoming his assistant and she's learning the ins and outs of his business and him as a person and things like that and how very, very loyal she becomes to him. And it was just such an amazing time. I enjoyed the dynamic between these two characters immensely. She's very much the sunshine to his crumb. And it was so very interesting to see her break down his walls, you know, because he's this big bad villain. But of course, as you're reading the story, you realize that he's really not the type of villain that everybody thinks he is. He has a lot of reasons for why he does what he does. Yes, he's murdering people. He's doing things that most people would consider as bad or wrong, but there are legitimate reasons to this. And you find yourself very much living in the morally gray of this story because you are actually rooting for the villain and his purpose. And that's actually another really great thing that I felt this story did, maybe not even intentionally, maybe unintentionally, but there was a really heavy message in the story about what is right is not necessarily lawful and what is lawful is not necessarily right. It's not black and white like we all want to think it is. And so when you're reading this book, you are comfortable living in the morally gray area. And like I said, you were rooting for the villain. And of course, you are rooting for Evangeline and the villain. Now, there are definitely hints of a romance that are going to happen, but it doesn't come to fruition in this story. So I'm definitely looking forward to the next one. I will absolutely be continuing with this. But this is a fantastic time. There are some amazing characters in here. There's even a sassy little frog who speaks by holding up signs. And I absolutely loved him to pieces. So from start to finish, this book was just absolutely phenomenal. I loved it to death and I gave it a 4.5 stars. And I would say the last top of the month is yet another surprise because that is the newest release by Megan Miranda called Daughter of Mine. Y'all know that I've broken up with Megan Miranda. I have read several books by her and for the most part, I've just found them supremely mediocre. And so I really just didn't feel like I needed to continue with her as an author, especially after reading The Only Survivors because I really didn't like that. I felt like that was one of her weakest. But then her newest release was featured on Book of the Month and I had to pick it up for a very specific content related reason. And so I went ahead and read it and y'all, I loved it. I think that this is her strongest book to date and I'm so, so glad that I read it. So this essentially follows our main character, Hazel, and this has the reluctant return home trip. She's having to return home because her father, who was a longtime detective in the town, has recently passed away and she has inherited his home, much to the chagrin of her two older brothers. And the reason I say that is because Hazel is not actually their biological sister. You find out more about that dynamic and why they're not really happy about her inheriting the home. And at this time, there's an extreme drought. I think they're in North Carolina and they haven't seen rain in weeks. And so because of that, the level of the lake is going down and down. And when it goes down, there's a car that is actually found. And so that prompts some mysterious questions about whose car that was, where the owner is. And then another car is found and Hazel realizes that car belonged to her mother who disappeared when she was very young, leaving her in the care of her father, who is actually like her adoptive father and her two older brothers. So like I said, you find more about that dynamic and what actually happened. And so the discovery of her mother's car leads her on this quest to determine what actually happened to her mother because she doesn't think her mother left by chance now. She thinks that there was more to the story that maybe something bad happened to her mother and it is about that investigation. And like I said, I just really, really enjoyed this story from start to finish. This is another one that I felt was very engaging, very well paced. And I just really was on the journey. I really wanted to know what happened from start to finish. I felt this was compulsively readable. It was very, very engaging. It was very compelling. And I also thought it was pretty atmospheric. There were definitely some chilling moments in here because you don't know who to trust. You don't know who is responsible for everything that is happening. And like I said, I just found this to be a very positive reading experience. And this is another one that surprised the heck out of me because after breaking up with Megan Miranda, I didn't think I was going to be reading anything from her ever again. And I gave it a four stars, but my enjoyment of it was probably closer to like a 4.25. If we're getting into the nitty gritty, all I know is that I just really had a fantastic reading experience with this one. And then in terms of my bottoms, I really didn't have any books that I egregiously disliked for the month. The lowest rating that I gave during the month was a three stars. But if I had to pick the one that I would say was probably not worth the read at all, it would probably be The Resort by Sarah Ox. And this was a very, very generic thriller. There wasn't really anything remarkable about it at all. It follows a bunch of expats who are living off an island in Thailand and what happens when there is a murder and the investigation that goes on. It is told from the main perspectives of two different women who are currently living on this island. Both of the women have secrets. They are both there for two different reasons and all of that is being uncovered as you're going through the story. And ultimately it was just fine. There was nothing remarkable about it. The characters were not particularly engaging or interesting or even likable for that matter. I really wasn't all that invested in finding out what was happening and I certainly wasn't all that shocked when I found out what was happening. So, I mean, it was just fine. I feel like this is absolutely one that you could skip and feel no qualms 
qualms about whatsoever. I gave it a three stars. Like I said, it was nothing egregiously awful. It was just fine and it didn't really cement itself in my mind. I will absolutely forget everything about this read in a couple of weeks time. All right, so those were some of my tops and bottoms for the month. Now let me go ahead and quickly run through all of the other books that I finished in the month of April. So the very first book that I finished in the month of April was The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, which I really enjoyed and I gave it a four stars. Next, I finished The Huntress by Kate Quinn. And originally I think I gave this a four stars, but I think I'm gonna downgrade it to a 3.5. This is definitely my least favorite Kate Quinn. I did talk about it more in a reading vlog, why it's my least favorite Kate Quinn, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and settle on a 3.5 for this one. Then I read The Housemaid Secret by Freedom McFadden, which I gave a 3.5 stars. I don't think this was nearly as strong as The Housemaid, but it was still an enjoyable, compulsively readable story. And I do recommend if you enjoyed The Housemaid. Then I finished Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. Y'all know how I feel about Abby Jimenez. She is one of my favorite romance authors of all time. I did give this a solid four stars, but unfortunately this is currently my least favorite Abby Jimenez to date. It just didn't work for me the same way as all of her other stories did. And I had quite a few technical issues with this one, but again, still a solid four stars. I would absolutely recommend. It just wasn't my favorite by her. Then I finished Creep by Jennifer Hillier, which I gave a three stars. Then I finished Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby, which I gave a four stars. I also finally read Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent, which I gave a four stars and I really enjoyed. Then I read The Therapist by B.A. Paris, which I gave a three stars. This is another one that I would say is pretty forgettable. None of her books have really impressed me since Behind Closed Doors, but I keep reading them because for the most part, they are pretty engaging and compulsively readable for the most part, but this was just okay. And this is another one that I'll probably forget absolutely everything about. So like I said, three stars. Then I read Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. And I have complicated feelings on this one. I think I'm gonna settle on a 3.5 stars. I feel like that book was insanely clever, but almost too clever. It was way overly complicated. Like I feel if you've read that book, you're probably going to know what I'm talking about. And it was definitely hard to follow, especially if you were listening to it. So I don't think I love this one nearly as much as everyone else did. So that's why I think I'm gonna go ahead and settle on a 3.5 stars for this one. Then I read Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh, which I gave a strong four stars. And then the very last one that I'm going to mention is actually Bunny by Mona Awad. That was actually a book that was supposed to be on my May TBR, but I started it a couple of days before May thinking that I was going to be reading it into May, but I actually DNF'd it before May could even get here, but nobody is surprised by that. I knew absolutely that Bunny was not a book for me, but it was a book that was recommended by one of y'all, Jillian. I'm so, so terribly sorry. And I was going to read it as part of the punishments that I received for my last round of TBR gameplay. And I gave it 30%, y'all. Like I gave it a solid and fair shot and I just couldn't do it anymore. It was making me hate my life and it was making me hate reading. And I just, I could not, I could not continue with it. But that was the very last book I attempted in the month of May. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into the bookish stats. Now for the month of April, I finished or attempted 15 books. So Bunny's actually incorporated into these reading statistics. However, it's not incorporated into the pages read, which was 5,324. I don't know how many actual pages of it I read since I was listening to it on audiobook. I don't like keeping track of the hours that I listened to on audio. I prefer to keep track of the pages because I feel like it's more tangible. If I don't have the physical book, I will go on Goodreads to get the page count. And if I do have the physical book, I will look at it to see how many pages it is. And of course I don't actually own Bunny, so I can't tell you how far I got in there. So that's not incorporated into the page count, but still a very solid page count reading of 5,324. In terms of ratings, I had three three-star reads, three 3.5 star reads, five four-star reads, two 4.5 star reads, one five-star and one that was not rated and that was the DNF. In terms of genres, I classified one of them as contemporary fiction, one of them as crime fiction, three of them as fantasy, one as historical fiction, two of them as mystery, one of them as sci-fi, and six of them as thrillers. And of course, in terms of formatting, they were full-length novels. As I've discussed many times, I don't read manga, graphic novels, comics, or anything like that, and I very rarely read novellas, so almost always this is going to be full novels. 13 of the books were listened to entirely via audio, and two of them were immersively read, so it was a mixture of physically reading with my eyeballs while listening to the audiobook. So technically all 15 of them were listened to in some form via audiobook. And in terms of where I obtained those audiobooks, three of them were obtained from Audible, five of them were obtained from Everrand, and seven of them were gotten from the Libby app or my library. And then in terms of audience, all 15 of the books that I read this year were for adult audiences. In terms of author status, five of the books that I read were debut novels. Again, as a reminder, that just means that the book that I read was the author's debut. That doesn't mean they are currently a debut author. They might have multiple publications out at this time. It just means that the book that I read this month was their original debut. Four of the books were from new to me authors and six were by authors that I had read from before. But again, also some of those books that I had marked as debut were also from authors that I had read from before. I think going forward, I might not keep track of the debut authors because I really don't feel like it's beneficial. So going forward, I might eliminate debut and just mark any true debut authors as new to me because I mean, they would be new to everybody, right? So we're gonna see how I choose to do that going forward. And in terms of publishing year, we definitely had some variety. Now, for some reason on this spreadsheet, I'm not actually able to sort this by numerical 
order so the publishing years are all over the place but we had two from 2023 two from 2021 two from 2019 four from this year 2024 one from 2022 one from 2020 one from 2014 and two from 2011 so we definitely had some variety going on there all right so now it's time to get into the haul and the unhaul portion of our programming but first as per usual we have to establish a baseline for where I am with my physical TBR so that by the end of this video we can actually balance the books now when I filmed my May reading roundup I had 54 books on my physical TBR however after I had posted that video I was so kindly reminded by one of my subscribers Erin that I had sold her the hurricane wars before I had filmed that video and so because it wasn't physically in my view and I had forgotten to notate it I actually didn't mention it in that video so at the end of my March reading roundup I should have had 53 books on my physical TBR not 54 because I was incorporating the hurricane wars into that number so we are starting this month with 53 books on my physical TBR out of the books that I read for the month of April six of them were books that I physically owned prior to the month of April however the bone season was not counted towards my physical TBR numbers in March because I was actively reading it during that time and I was almost done with it I was almost done with it by the end of March so we are only going to deduct five from this number and now that we have a baseline for where my physical TBR currently stands let's go ahead and get into the haul the very first book that I hauled in the month of April was The Banker's Wife by Christina Alger which I actually read in March and I really enjoyed so much so that I wanted to go ahead and have a physical copy of this on my shelves so I picked this up and naturally it is not going to be added to my TBR as I've already read it. I also picked up Serpent and the Wings of Night in April because I knew that I was going to be reading it in April so again I picked it up and I read it in April so this is not going to be added to my physical TBR. If you are not familiar this is a fantasy romance that features vampires and a competition like aspect so if all of that sounds good to you I highly recommend picking it up. Was it the most mind-blowing thing ever? No but I really really did enjoy it and I'm looking forward to continuing with it in the future especially after like the twist that came at the end of it. Just for the Summer was another one that I picked up in April as part of my book of the month selections and as we've discussed I have already read this so this is another one that is not being added to my physical TBR. Same thing with Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda that was in that same book of the month order which I did of course read and it will not be added to my TBR. Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth is actually the only book of the month book from April that I received in April that is going to be going on my physical TBR because I didn't manage to get to it in April so this is the first one that we are adding to my physical TBR for the month of April. Also in April I received the March adult book only fairy loot box that was incredibly late I didn't receive it until mid-April so it was certainly delayed in coming to me so of course we have to count it towards April's haul even though it was March's book. The book is called A Feather So Black by Lyra Celine. It is of course an absolutely stunning edition. Look at those pages y'all absolutely gorgeous. There is the back. Here is the naked hardcover, the spine and the back and then we have some custom end pages. So this is actually one of the fairy loot books that I will not be holding on to. This is basically going to immediately be going up on my pango because it's not really a story that I'm interested in because it's very like fairy tale esque in my opinion. Let me read you the synopsis of this. In a kingdom where magic has been lost, Fia is a rare changeling. She was left behind the wicked fair folk when they stole the high queen's daughter Iala. When a hidden gate to the world of the fair folk is discovered, Fia is tasked by the high queen to retrieve Iala and break her curse. But she doesn't go alone. With her is Prince Rogan, Iala's betrothed, and Fia's childhood best friend. As the two journey into a world where magic winds through the roots of the trees and beauty can be a deadly illusion, Fia's mission is complicated by her feelings for the prince and her unexpected attraction to the dark-hearted fey lord holding Iala. Irian might be more monster than man but he seems to understand Fia in a way no one ever has. So like I said very whimsical very fairy tale esque it definitely sounds like there's going to be like a love triangle going on in there and I don't know it just didn't sound up my alley so this is being hauled and unhauled in the same month so it's not going to be added to my physical TBR. I also received the fairy loot special edition of Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. This actually came to me before the fairy loot edition of Fourth Wing which is currently on its way to me so that will be in next month's haul but look at those beautiful sprayed edges. There is the back. Here is the stunning naked hardcover with that bronze foiling, the spine with a dragon on it, nothing on the back. Here we have some cool looking end pages. This is definitely one that's going to be added to my TBR because I haven't read this one yet but I hope to get to it very very soon. And the very last book that I hauled in the month of April of course is my very own copy of Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I couldn't not own a copy of this given how much I loved it so I'm very very glad to have this on my shelves and of course it's not being added to my physical TBR because I've already read it. All right so that is it. That is the end of the haul. Out of all of the books that I hauled in the month of April only two of them are being added to my physical TBR so that is pretty good. If my math is correct we are currently now at 50 books on my physical TBR down from 53 but I do have a couple of books that I want to unhaul today. So the primary two that I'm unhauling they go together and that is the illustrated edition of Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. So I actually buddy read The Assassin's Apprentice with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. I believe at this point it was back in late 2022. I know that we had plans to continue in the series last year and it just never happened because we actually buddy read House of Sky and Breath together instead and the longer that I'm away from this series the less interest that I 
have in pursuing it. If I'm being honest with you, Assassin's Apprentice did not blow me away like it blows everybody else away. And I understand that Robin Hobb is an incredibly beloved fantasy author and a lot of people swear by her series they love her to death. And it's entirely possible that if I were to continue in these series that I would feel the same way too. But I just don't have any inclination to do that based on my experience with Assassin's Apprentice. Like it was fine. It was okay overall. I didn't necessarily find it super compelling or engaging. I found myself a little bit bored through most of the time that I was reading it. And I did start Royal Assassin. I think I might have gotten through like the prologue or something, which was pretty long. And I just had no interest in continuing. And I wasn't looking forward to reading it. So I actually put it away and started reading something else and it went fine for me. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take that as a sign that I don't need to continue with the series because as I mentioned multiple times, I am very, very selective about the fantasy series that I decide to progress with because I can only read a handful of them a year. And there are so many fantasy series out there that I've started and I absolutely love with my whole heart and soul and I want to continue with. And I don't think that I want to put energy into a series that I don't know if I'm going to love. These are taking up an extensive amount of room on my TBR and they're beautiful, gorgeous, illustrated editions. And I think that some people out there would love, love, love to have these. So I think that I'm going to go ahead and pass them on. And then the very last book that I'm going to unhaul today, it is another adult fairy loop book. It is Feybound by Sara El Arifi. I've been hearing a lot of amazing things about this author and there's been a lot of buzz going around about this book. So originally I was going to keep it, but Becca from Becca and the Books recently read this and based on her review of the story and some of the content in here, it just really turned me off to the story. I really didn't care to read it. And so even though this is an absolutely stunning edition and I fully intended on reading this book, I think now I'm going to go ahead and let it go. This is another one that is leaving my TBR this month. All right, so that is it. Those are all the books that I'm hauling and unhauling for the month of April. And if my math is correct, that is now leaving me with 47 books on my physical TBR down from 53. So we are down another six books on my physical TBR. We are definitely going in the right direction. So hopefully we are going to get this number down even further. And I hope that I can continue to read all of the unread books that come into me in a timely manner. All right, everybody. And that is it. That is my April reading roundup. Please comment down below and let me know what some of your tops and bottoms were for the month so far. I would love to know. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a video game emoji in honor of my experience reading Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, which I loved so, so much. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.